Good morning. Welcome to our online church experience. We are so glad that you have joined us this morning. Let us know if you are watching. Drop your name in the chat box below. Our heart and our prayer for you is that you would be encouraged throughout our service, that you would be ignited with passion and with purpose, and that you would also encounter and know the presence of God right where you are watching this morning. We're gonna enter into a time of worship. So let's prepare our hearts with our song. Let's get ready, here we go. We're here to worship. We're here to give him the highest praise, amen. amen. No matter what, I won't stop praising his name. Anybody with me? I give you glory. All you've brought me through. And now I'm ready for whatever you want to do. Moving forward, follow. Now I'm ready for whatever you want to do. Your presence is an open door. We want you, Lord, like never before. Your presence is an open door. Just come yeah. in every season. The grace has been enough, and I'm believing the best is yet to come. The cross before me, my hope on things above, and in you, Jesus. The best, the very best is yet to come. a shout. Give God a shout of praise. 
Your presence is an open door. We want you, Lord, like never before. Your presence is all we want. It's an open door. Like never before. Hallelujah in this place. We praise and we bless the name of Jesus. Truly he's worthy to be praised. Amen. We can search everywhere, but we can only find happiness in him I search the world but it couldn't fill me a man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough then you came alone Put me back together. That's what he does. And every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Come on, your person. Oh, there's nothing. Come on, we're not afraid. I'm not afraid to show you my weakness, my failures and flaws, but you've seen them all and you still call me friend. See that? It's the God of the mountain. It's the God of and grace won't find me again and again and again oh there's nothing yeah better than you there's nothing better than you Lord. oh there's nothing no no nothing is better than you come on sing that again Sing this in unison right here. You turn morning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. One more time. You turn morning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. Season to highways, you're the only one. Only one who can. You're the only one who can. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Oh, 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 oh there's nothing better.
dancing turns morning. You turn morning to dancing. You get beauty for ashes. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. You turn shame into glory. Glory. than him. God, we just praise and we bless you today as we worship. We give you glory and honor because truly there's nothing better than you, Lord. We bless and we just give you the glory. Thank you for letting us worship. We just bless you and we praise you and we thank you for your awesome goodness, God. In Jesus' name we say amen. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up till I lay my head down, I will sing of the goodness. And all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness have led me through the fire darkest nights you were close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend yeah oh I have lived in the goodness of God Sing this. And all my life you have been 
Lord, all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am made, oh, you make me able, oh, I am seen of the goodness of God. grateful for the goodness of God that chases us. Church, can we just take a moment and can we just stay in this moment of reflection? Maybe God is showing you some snippets, some memories. He's reminding you maybe in the pain. He's reminding you that he was there with you. There was never a moment that he was not there with you. But as we reflect, would you hear the voice of God? So God, we thank you for your faithfulness, that even in the valleys, you were there for us. On the mountaintops, you were there for us. You have been nothing but faithful to us. And we are so grateful. You have never let us down. There's never been a moment that you have let us down. So we thank you that you are for us and that you are good. This morning, Father, I think of just reflecting. I think, Father, of your goodness and your faithfulness in our church. God, I thank you that you are speaking and moving. I thank you that you make all things beautiful just in time. God, I thank you for our, our church family and we lift up our church family. We pray for those who are dealing with sickness, Father, from the flu, from COVID-19. We pray, Father, for supernatural healing over every single body over our community, Father, over Victorville, God, over the high desert, God, would you just release a supernatural touch of healing, Father, full healing, God. I thank you that you are willing and able to do 100% healing. So God, I pray that you would do it. God, we just love you. We bless you and we honor you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Can you believe that we are less than two weeks away from Thanksgiving and 40 days away from Christmas? I can't believe it. And I'm sure that you've been compiling a wish list in that time. But something happened to me this week that made me really think about what really matters in this season. My kids were sitting with their grandparents watching some television and all these commercials were being played on the television and my kids kept saying, I want that toy, I want that toy. And grandpa had to stop them and said, what are you gonna give me for Christmas? But no, the truth was that he had a really cool moment with, with my, my kids talking about what Jesus says, that it is better or more blessed to give than to receive. It is so easy for us to think about what things we want, but let us as Christians, as disciples of Jesus, reflect more on how we can give more than what we should receive from others. It is truly more blessed to give than to receive. So church, I wanna encourage you in that as we prepare to give unto the Lord this morning. 
As we give today, there are several ways that you can give. You can text VF Assembly to 77977. You can always go on our church website and click on the giving tab, or you can mail in a check or drop off a tithe and offering to our church office at 15260 Nisqually Road here in Victorville, California. We are so grateful for your generous giving unto the Lord that allows us to continue to spread the good news of the gospel throughout the high desert and beyond. Let us continue to be generous in our giving today. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much that you are a great father that gives good gifts to his children. And Lord, in this season, it could be so consuming to think about the things we don't have and think about the things we want. But Lord Jesus, you remind us that it is truly more blessed to give than to receive. And I pray that our hearts today would be aligned with the heart of God, the, the heart of the kingdom, which is always about generosity. And so Lord, as you have blessed us, let us also be a blessing to others. I pray for those who in this season have had a, a time of struggles with their work, their employment, with maybe uh, finances. Would you provide for them in a supernatural way? Thank you that you are the God that makes a way and we trust in you. And for all those who have a job and have been blessed, that they would never forget, that we would never forget that we have been blessed to be a blessing. So Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your provision. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Thank you for your generous and faithful giving unto the Lord. Let's continue to have an open heart and open mind to hear all that God has for us through our pastor today. Give thanks to the Lord because he is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord. His love is unfailing. His deeds are wonderful for all of mankind. Give thanks to the Lord in all circumstances. Rejoice and pray continually, for this is the will of God in Jesus Christ. Give thanks for all the goodness that comes from his generous hand. Give thanks for all the provision he supplies that I fail to notice most days. Give thanks for all the love that surrounds me in expected and unexpected ways. Give thanks with my family as we hold each other's hands and bow our heads in gratitude. Give thanks with my friends as we laugh, celebrate, and counsel one another. Give thanks to the Lord with my church as I raise my hands, praise his name, and listen to his mighty word. Give thanks by lending a hand. Give thanks by satisfying the thirsty. Give thanks by keeping his ways. I thank you, my God, and praise your glorious name. That's exactly right. We need to give thanks to the Lord. The Bible says, for he is good and his love endures forever. I think about the month of November and how important it is that we not only give thanks in this month, but how we give thanks to the Lord 365 days out of the year. I love that song that we just were able to sing that God is good, that we're thankful for all of what he has done throughout our lives. And, and for some of you, you've known the Lord for a long time. Others of you, you may have known the Lord for a short time or whatever the case is. The fact is, is that God is good always. And so we need to give thanks to him always. Today, I think of this emphasis as we lead into Thanksgiving, and we're going to continue to do an amazing Thanksgiving outreach. Much of it's going to be outside and in the parking lot on Thanksgiving morning. We would encourage you, if you want to be a part of that, to sign up. Let us know in the church office you want to help and be a part of an amazing outreach. And, and today or this weekend is, is an opportunity for us to bring shoes and clothing and blankets we call it Shoeless Sunday. We're not asking you necessarily to come to church without shoes, but we are asking you to bring a slightly worn pair of shoes, one that would work really well in the winter season for those who may need some extra help. Every year we go through tons of clothing. You may have jeans, you may have jackets, 
You may even have some t-shirts that you haven't worn for a long time or sweatshirts, hooded sweatshirts, whatever it is, blankets. Bring them and just bring them to the church. Let them be a part of your offering. What a great thing it is for us to be a part of Shoeless Plus Weekend. Well, we've been in a sermon series that we started a couple of weeks ago called The Kingdom. And as we are, are, are unpacking this, we, we started in week number one, two weeks ago, we talked about the importance of being a citizen of his kingdom. When you accept Jesus Christ as your savior and Lord, you become a citizen of God's kingdom, a part of heaven, so to speak, a part of the kingdom of heaven, a part of the kingdom of God. And, and, and I'm so thankful that I, I have a, a birth certificate that says I was born in this country. I'm so thankful that I hold a passport that allows me to travel on, on behalf of my citizenship in the United States of America. And I can travel to other lands and I've been on missions trips to Africa and to Europe and to South America. And it's been a great thing to be a part of those things, but there's nothing quite like our country. And the bits of being a citizen of our country, I also remind you that the Apostle Paul says in Philippians chapter 3 that we are citizens of heaven. That we've got to keep our eyes fixed upon Jesus because, quite frankly, we are sojourners passing through this place. And, and our citizenship may be in a certain nation and maybe it's a U.S. citizenship for you today. But the fact is, is that your citizenship, if you have a relationship with Jesus, is truly in heaven. That there's place in heaven being prepared for you. Jesus said it. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come back to take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. Wow, what a cool thing, being a part of his kingdom. I'm also thankful that not only am I a citizen of heaven, but last week we, we talked about the governance of heaven, the politics of heaven, that, that, that you know, we, we in, in our country, think about democracy and, and this republic that we have, and, and we have a voice and we have a vote. What's really interesting in God's kingdom, and we think about a kingdom really being made up of two words, a king's domain, that it's his domain. Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. As he was talking to Pilate, as Pilate had him on trial, my kingdom is not of this world, but he also said that my kingdom is an eternal kingdom. And so as we keep his kingdom in mind, that we must realize we are here to serve the king. It's about his domain. It's about his will. It's about his desires. It's about his blessing. It's about his favor. It's about what he does in us and through us. That's an awesome thing. And that really sets us up nicely for today's message. Because it's a logical progression of understanding, okay, we're a citizen of heaven. Here's how heaven works. Here's how the kingdom of God works. Here, here's the governance of that. And, and as a result of those two things, now, now we need to talk about being an ambassador of his. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20, the apostle Paul makes this statement. And it says, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors. Everybody say ambassador. As though we, God were making his appeal through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. We are an ambassador of Jesus Christ. You know, if you've been connected with our fellowship or our denomination for any period of time, you know, especially if you have maybe even a, I was going to say more gray hair. I, I, actually, I have less gray hair. I, I was looking in the mirror the other day, and, and it's like, you know what? I would play Santa Claus really well, wouldn't I? Because I, I, I don't even think I have any more gray. It's, it's, just, it's just white, right? Anyway, I digress. The fact is, if you're a little bit older than I am, you know that in the Assemblies of God, the youth, for many, many years, were called Christ's ambassadors, 
And, and I love the concept. They even had a song that they sang back in the day and the whole deal with that went along with that. Christ's ambassadors, that we are ambassador of Jesus Christ. Well, the apostle Paul was telling the church in Corinth to be ambassadors. And it's not just something that's relegated to the youth. It's, it's, it's for all of us. God is asking all of us to be his ambassador. Well, let's talk about the role of an ambassador. The role of an ambassador. Well, number one, the, the ambassador represents. An ambassador represents. You just kind of, if you're following along in your message notes, there's your fill in the blank first one. An ambassador represents. What is an ambassador? An ambassador is an authorized representative of a sovereign. He or she speaks not on his or her own name, but on behalf of the ruler whose deputy he or she is. The whole duty and responsibility is to interpret that ruler's mind faithfully to those to whom they have been sent. And so as Christ's ambassadors, we are being sent, we are being called to represent him well wherever we go. So ambassadors truly represent. Titus chapter 2, verses 7 and 8 makes this statement. It says, in everything... Set them an example by doing what is good. In your teaching, show integrity, seriousness, and soundness of speech that cannot be condemned so that those who oppose you may be ashamed because they have nothing bad to say about us. Wow. So we, as ambassadors, are called to set an example. We are called to represent well. It was George Schultz, when as the Secretary of State during the Reagan administration, he kept a large globe in his office. When newly appointed ambassadors had an interview with him, and when ambassadors returned from their post for their first visit with him, where while they were leaving his office, Schultz would test them. He would say to them, go over to the globe and prove to me that you can identify your country. They would always go over, spin the globe, and put their finger on the country to which they were sent. But when former Senate Majority Leader Mike Mansfield was appointed an ambassador to Japan and was put to the same test, Mansfield spun the globe and put his hand on the United States. He said, that's my country. Schultz went on to say, I've told that story to all sorts of ambassadors going out. Never forget, you're over there in another country, but your country is still the United States. You're there to represent us. Take care of our interests and never forget it. You're representing the best country in the world. I love this statement because it's really true when we are an ambassador, we think about the, the, being an ambassador, yes, we may be an ambassador to another country, but it's really about the country that you represent, or in this case, it's about the kingdom that you represent. That no matter where we go, we represent Jesus. The fact is, is that no matter where I go, no matter what I do, I represent Jesus. I, I, I represent our church, and I represent Jesus wherever I go, and, and, and we can't we can't dismiss that. We can't distance ourselves from it. The fact is, is that we are tied to it. As, as, a, as a citizen of heaven, as, as, a, as a born again believer, as someone who knows Jesus as your Savior and Lord, you are an ambassador of Jesus Christ. And we need to live it out well. I think today of my daughter Rachel, a couple of years ago, while she was going to school at Vanguard University, she studied abroad in a summer between her junior and senior year. And she went with a whole bunch of students from Vanguard. They studied abroad together and, and, and they took like a month to do so, an intensive course that they had. And it was a great thing, a wonderful experience for her. And, and on Sunday, they were, as they were in Italy studying, they wanted to go to church. Well, as you may know, in Italy, uh, most every church is a Catholic church. And so they went into this Catholic church one day on this particular Sunday, and they were looking to find a seat. There were five girls together. Rachel was one of them, and, 
and they found that there was nothing altogether except the front row. How many of you have ever experienced that? And so they walked down to the front row, they sat down, they're ready for the service to begin and in the midst of, uh, of the service ready to begin, the priest who was on the platform walked down off of the platform and came down and, and looked at the, the girls, the five girls sitting together and, they, and he said, you're Americans. And, and they said, wow, is it that obvious? And then he went on to make a powerful statement to them that Rachel says, I'll never forget. Because he said to them, I see Jesus all over you. All five of them had a relationship with Jesus Christ. He went on to say, he says, I, I see Jesus in your smile. I see Jesus in your eyes. I, I, I see Jesus in you. And she said, Dad, it was, it was an amazing moment that we did not expect to happen at all. And yet one that I'll never forget. And may the same thing be said about us. That when people encounter us, we represent him so well that people see Jesus all over us. Not because we think we're better, not because we're this or that or the next thing, but the fact is, is that, that just because we represent him well, just because we're reflecting Jesus, just because Jesus is in our hearts and, and people start seeing more of Jesus in us than they see of us, that's a good thing. A second thing that I want to share with you about being an ambassador, ambassadors represent, number one, but two, they also advocate. Becoming an advocate in other words, an advocate is one who speaks on behalf of, that ambassadors are advocates. They, they, they advocate for the circumstance, the situation. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4, it says, For we speak as messengers approved by God to be entrusted with the good news. Our purpose is to please God, not people. He alone examines the motives of our heart, that we would be people who represent the Lord well, and we speak on his behalf. And when we speak those words, they are words that, that, that bring life and bring encouragement and bring blessing and bring favor and bring God's Holy Spirit into that moment. A young salesman one day was disappointed about losing a big sale. And as he talked with his sales manager, he lamented, I guess it just proves you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink, he said to the manager. And the manager replied, your job is not to make him drink. Your job is to make him thirsty. And think about that in the context of being an advocate, speaking on behalf of Jesus, representing him well. If we represent him well, your job is to not make someone drink. You, your job is not to get them saved. Your job, though, though God could use you that way and don't back away from that, I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is that your job, the pressure is not on you. Your job is to so talk about the Lord in a way that people just want to just be drawn right in. They become thirsty for Jesus. The words that you say, the things that you do, the way you, that you live life, if we're gonna be an ambassador of Jesus, well, we need to create that opportunity that people go, wow, I want some of that. I want some of that Jesus that you're talking about. Because here's the problem is that so many people have this idea who, of who Jesus is. It's kind of this religious figure thing and, and it's not at all about a relationship. And the fact is, is that God wants a relationship with every single one of us. And the more that we walk down that road of advocating for Jesus well, the better off we will be. Romans chapter one, verse 16 says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel. Because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. And so let's not be ashamed. Let's not be ashamed. Let's present Jesus well. Let's present him in such a way that people just go, wow, that's amazing. I want some of that. I want that relationship. First Thessalonians 1 Thessalonians 1.5 
says to us, because our gospel came to you not simply with words, here's the key, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit, and deep conviction. You know how we lived among you for your sake. Those three things are really what I want to focus on here today because it's not about the words that you say, even as I'm preaching to you today. It's not always about the words that I say, but it's about the power of God. It's about the Holy Spirit being in a moment. It's about the deep conviction of the way in which it's shared, the, the, the opportunity to bring people closer to Jesus, that we would not miss out on that. There are people all over the high desert and beyond that desperately need answers to life. And they're gonna look for it all different kinds of ways. And I'm here today to tell you, you've got the answer. You've got the answer in Jesus. Jesus is the answer in people's lives. And when we present him well, and, and all of a sudden people get attracted to it, they want some of it. They want, they want to know more. They, they, they're thirsty for more. And, and, and as we, we continue to let God use us, be an advocate. I want to challenge you as we have now pivoted again. We tend to use that word a lot around here during this pandemic. That in the midst of this pivot and now historically offering a Saturday night service at five o'clock and Sunday services at 10 and 11.30 and are online at 9.30. I wanna challenge you during this holiday season of Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's to invite people to come. Invite people to engage. If you're online and you're watching this online, invite them to, to join you and be a part of, of that service that you're watching online. If, if you're coming on campus, then make sure that as you come on campus, you're connecting and bring some people with you. Invite them to come and be with you. It is so important that we advocate well, becoming his spokesperson. A third thing, that I want to leave with you today. Ambassadors represent, they become advocates, and third, they defend. They defend. Now, here's an interesting thing, because on one hand, God doesn't need us to defend. Let's make that abundantly clear. God doesn't need you, and if all of a sudden you mess up and you're not, you're not defending the faith like you need to, it's not because, wow, okay, God just lost. God's sovereign. He doesn't need us to do it, but he is asking us to do it. He is wanting us to connect with him. He is wanting us to defend for the faith. Have you ever had someone defend you? Has that ever happened in your life where, where someone stood up for you? Maybe they said something on your behalf. Maybe they defended you in, in, in the midst of, uh, of some conversation or maybe, maybe the gossip train was going a particular way and all of a sudden somebody stood up and said, you know what, I don't believe that to be true. Here's what I know to be true. And they defended you. Doesn't, doesn't that make you feel good when people defend you? Maybe you defended somebody else. And, and, and it's really important that we, that we, that we go through life and, and we stand with each other. God is wanting us to do that, but God is wanting us to defend him as well. He doesn't need us to defend him, but he wants us to speak on his behalf. Philippians chapter 1, 16 says, the latter do so out of love, knowing that I am, this is Paul who is in prison, writing this letter to the church in Philippi. I am put here referencing in prison, in chains for the defense of the gospel. So there are moments that God is wanting us to stand up for what is right, stand up for those things that he has proclaimed. He's not only wanting us to, to, to talk about it, but he's wanting us to defend it. Colossians 4, 6 says, let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. One of the things that as we continue to move forward as a church that I want to make sure that we're doing is, is that we're putting tools in your tool belt, so to speak. That, that as you are doing life, that, that you are well equipped to be able to defend the faith, that you're able to share your faith, that you're able to walk people down the road of, of, of relationship with Jesus. See that in that defense, we need to understand that, you know, who, who are you? Who are you? That we would 
represent him well, that we would know how to live our lives and that what we live and how we live is consistent with what we say. Isn't that so key? Isn't that why we have people all the time saying that Christians are a bunch of hypocrites because of what they say and what they do are two different things. And we need to bring that together. We already talked about that, the integrity of our faith, that we bring those items together. We need to live that kind of way, that we defend the faith well. And then last, we need to be people as ambassadors who reconcile. We need to be ambassadors who reconcile. Ambassadors represent, they are advocates, they are defenders, and they're also reconcilers. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse 18 makes this statement. It says, all of this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ. Let me just stop there. He reconciled us to himself through Christ. In other words, through what Jesus did, Jesus who left heaven and he came to earth, put on human skin for you and me. He died upon a cross, the most brutal death of its day. He did so because he loves us. And in the midst of the love that he has for us, he brings this reconciliation into our lives. He takes that which is sinful, me, and you, and he places us in a position where we have no sin, not because we haven't, but because of what Jesus did, we're now justified. You know, I think about those two theological terms, how powerful they are of justification. Justification, just as if I've never sinned, that God declares us justified. God declares us without sin. It's a courtroom scene incident where God, who is the judge, he's about to bring the verdict down. You have been prosecuted because of your sin and the enemy is bringing all sorts of mud about your life in front of God. And yes, you've messed up. And every one of us has messed up because the Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We've all messed up. And that mess up called sin puts a blemish in our lives. And as a result of that, the wages of sin is death. So your sin leads to death. God's ready to declare you, in a sense, dead in your sins and your trespasses. And that's where Jesus stands up. He's your defense attorney. And Jesus stands up and says, judge, I have something to say. That though so-and-so, I'll insert my name, though John has messed up in his life, the really cool thing is that I've already paid the penalty for his sin. And he doesn't have to worry about that because he has relationship with me. And we are declared not sinful, but sinless because of what Jesus did. Isn't that awesome? We praise God for that. That's what reconciliation is. Pulling us back into that relationship with God because of what Jesus has done. He's already given this to us by and through Christ. The second part of the verse though, goes on to say, all of this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ. Here's the second part. And gave us the ministry of reconciliation. So who is the reconciler? The Lord is the reconciler. I'm not a reconciler, you're not a reconciler, but we have a ministry of reconciliation because we represent him as his ambassador and we lead people into that relationship. And when we lead them into that relationship with him, all of a sudden, now as that representative, that ambassador, we are now helping to reconcile people back to Jesus. That's what it's about. So today, as we think about how we can represent, how we can be the ambassador, how we can speak on his behalf and defend the faith well, we can also pull people in. And that's what God wants. In fact, didn't Jesus say in the New Testament, go out into the highways and the byways and compel them to come in? In other words, give them opportunity. And so my challenge to us today, invite them invite them. We're going to have opportunities for, for uh, some very creative things over these two months to invite people to, to connect with. We want those things to happen. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse 20 goes on to say two verses later, it says, we are therefore Christ's ambassador as though God were making his appeal through us. Yes, he is putting the responsibility on us 
that as people are saved, it, it's happening because he's using us. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And so we don't need to worry about, is the church going to live? Is the church going to thrive? Is it going to be alive? Is it going to, yes, the church will thrive. The church will be alive. The church will continue to move forward because the Lord said, I will build my church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And so as we continue to move forward, let God use you because the appeal is coming through us. The church is not a building. The church is people and we are his people. So let God use you. And he goes on then to say, we implore you then on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Well, that takes us to this great point of, is that where you are today? Are you reconciled to the Lord? The really cool thing is that God wants a relationship with every single one of us. Every single one of us. That we can be reconciled to him. We can build that relationship with Jesus. We can have this opportunity to walk forward in his name. Today, I want to lead us in a prayer. And if today you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, as we just bow in this moment, I would encourage you to reach out to him and to pray this prayer. Pray this prayer, this prayer of dedication of your heart and your life to Jesus. Let the Lord do a fresh work in your life today. As you reach out to him, invite him in. He wants to take away your sin. He wants to give you eternal life. That's what he wants for you, but he's just waiting for you to ask. So today, today we have the opportunity of making the ask. Making the ask. Let's do it together. Let's all pray this prayer together, shall we? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus into this world to die upon a cross to forgive us of our sins. Today, Lord Jesus, I put my hope and I put my trust in you. Please forgive me of my sins and give me eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. What a great thing it is to be able to celebrate that which God is doing in people's lives today. If you've made that decision for Christ today, we would encourage you to just put in the chat line, I did it, I did it. I made that decision for Christ. If you're a part of our church family, we would love to connect with you. You can connect with us in our church office. You can stop by the information table. You can be a, a different ways to be able to connect. We would just love to walk with you and be there for you every step of the way. You know, it really starts with opening up the word of God because he's given us the roadmap. He's given us the direction. If you don't have a Bible, just let us know. We'll give you a Bible free of charge. We would love to put that in your hand today. Thank you for making the best decision of your life. The conclusion of our message today very simply is be a kingdom ambassador. Be a kingdom ambassador. Choose to represent Jesus. Choose to represent his kingdom well wherever you go. God bless you. Continue to serve him with all of your heart. Thank you so much for joining us for Church Online. What an amazing service. Thank you, Pastor John, for that amazing word and reminder that we are ambassadors of the kingdom of God. Next week is our finale for the kingdom series. So make sure you join us next Sunday at 9.30 a.m. A great way to stay connected to us is by following us on Facebook and on Instagram and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Another great way is that every Wednesday at 7 p.m. we have our midweek online Bible study. We would love to connect with you at 7 p.m. every Wednesday. Well, that's all we have this week. You guys have an amazing week. God bless you.